Okay, last video that I'm going to do before your exam. So this is an essay on innocence in Pidgin English. And I'm going to read through the essay and comment on some of the things I've put and why I've put them. So Stephen Kelman's Pidgin English could be seen as a criticism about modern life and how young people's innocence is corrupted by the situations they find themselves in. So corruption is when something is broken or when evil comes into it. And if we think about innocent and people being innocent, they're quite childlike. And Harry is obviously quite childlike. So we'll go through each paragraph and I'll comment on some things that I've put. Firstly, by choosing a young immigrant in a strange country, Kelman forces the reader to consider how harsh life might seem for a young boy in a new country. And if you write a statement like Kelman forces, then actually it's quite a high level comment to make because you're talking about the writer's choice and what the writer is trying to do. Harrison is clearly a naive and impressionable character who wishes to try all of the flavours of Haribo. However, Kelman immediately juxtaposes this image of innocence by starting the novel Media Res in a crime scene where another teenager has been murdered. So Media Res means right in the middle of the action, really high level term if you can use it, and you've got juxtaposition, juxtaposition there. So he's got somebody naive and innocent juxtaposed with this idea of murder and think about the impact that has. By stating that the blood was darker than you thought, Harry, uh, Harrison is immediately faced with a life-changing impression. He has seen blood for the first time. Kelman foreshadows his future when he considers that by crossing the line, he will turn to dust. 11-year-old Harry is thrust into a world of uncertainty. Perhaps starting the novel in this way, by starting the novel in this way, Kelman is forcing the reader to reflect on the real-life scenario that the novel is based on, the story of Damalola Taylor. This allows the reader to question who is at fault and whether it is society as a whole. So I haven't just written that question at the end, I've put it into a sentence. And I've picked out that quotation, turn to dust, because it's a lovely quotation. It's, some, it's a superstition, perhaps, that has been faced, but it does bring to the end when Harry dies, and you, you could analyse the word dust in there as well. This idea is further emphasised by the cyclical structure of the novel. The repetition of You Could See the Blood at the end reflects the idea that characters are trapped within this violent society where their innocence is corrupted by the world around them. Kalman appears to be criticising the society in which modern teenagers are subjected to high levels of violence and gang the gang culture they're a part of. The cyclical structure amplifies the idea that they are unable to escape the society that they are part of. Equally, the amount of social deprivation within this society, emphasised by the tower blocks and Harry's unbranded trainers, explores the idea that without money and aspirations, these children are likely to lose their innocence as they are turned to a life of crime. So, if you've watched those other videos as well, I've spoken about that cyclical structure, it's worth mentioning in every essay that you're in, just turn it so that it reflects the title. And that social deprivation and the idea of the tower blocks are really, really important within the novel and they're important to reflect the idea of innocence as well. Kelman also uses the theme of innocence to explore power struggles within society. Even Dean, who is picked on by the Dell Farm crew who steal his pound coin, tells a small kids playing on a mattress to piss off or will batter you. Use of violent verbs such as batter emphasises that all children seek to gain control. This is further emphasised by the imperative piss off. This is echoed by the pigeon's comment that violence always came too easy to humans. Kalman seems to be commenting on the idea that all humans seek to manipulate those weaker than themselves. Therefore, if this is allowed, their innocence is corrupted by their own internal desires. We see this again when Harrison taunts Jordan with his car, waiting until Jordan was beside himself before shutting the door on him. This callous behaviour demonstrates that although Harry does not succumb to back gang behaviour, he still takes control over others and delights in manipulating them. This is accentuated by the last line of the book when Harry comments that all babies look the same. We could interpret that it's society that corrupts young people as we are all born with the same potential for good, reflecting Julius' advice to Harry to stay good for as long as he can. So it's really important for you to think about that idea of control and link it to the idea of innocence and the corruption of innocence as well. You'll notice that lots of elements of this essay are very, very similar to the essay on conflict and I've done that on purpose to show you how you can use the same points and the same ideas as long as you're just changing sort of the first and last line of your analysis and linking it back to the essay title.
So this image that I've just referred to is explored further when the playground is set on fire. If the playground is seen as a metaphor for children's innocence, the burning might symbolise the end of childhood caused by gang mentality and criminal behaviour. The pigeon tells Harry to watch the cracks in the pavement, which is perhaps symbolic of temptation in inner city London areas. Harry must avoid obstacles that may lure him into joining the DFC or becoming involved in crime. Furthermore, the corruption of Harrison's innocence is exemplified throughout the novel by his misinterpretations about racism and sex. Kelman uses dramatic irony when Harry misunderstands why his mother has been called a fuzzy wuzzy and is degraded by her patients. It suggests that Harry, an immigrant, is surrounded by a high degree of racism and might find it impossible to work out how he belongs in this society. He even begins to use racist language when he calls Somalis pirates, suggesting that negativity can infiltrate even the most innocent people's thoughts and mindsets. Additionally, Harry misuses the phrase suck off throughout the novel. Although a more mature reader might recognise what is meant by this phrase, Harry has little knowledge of sex and kissing. This emphasises to the reader how young and innocent Harry is and makes the ending of the novel even more tragic. We live in a society that seeks to destroy our innocence. And the other point you could put in there, if you can sort of bear to write about it, is how Makita um, causes Harry to be involved in that situation where she puts his hands down her pants and you could reflect on uh, that idea and that loss of innocence there as well. And also as a reaction to that, Makita, to, uh, sorry, um, Lydia, Harry's sister, goes away and she cuts up her parrot costume so that also emphasizes the innocence fading as well overall kelman's novel can be seen as a criticism of the war on innocence harry is surrounded by a number of wars and conflicts that ultimately end his life if we see harry as a metaphor for all young people and the innocence within them we can see the issues raised by kelman concerning our society and perhaps we can start to address these so that our inner children are not destroyed so that's taking thinking back to the introduction and taking that idea of the meaning behind the novel and the moral behind the novel right hope you have understood most of that feel free to email me if there are things that you still want to question have a good evening